So next on our program today, um, we're going to uh, look at an exciting project um, called The Master of, of Manpi, The Life and Art of Mik Namarari Japujari. Japujari was a Pintapi man born around 1923 and an award-winning Papanya artist. The Master from Manpi has been compiled by Alec O'Halloran uh, over the last decade with important contributions from Namarari's family. Um, and his wife Elizabeth Marks Nakamaram, who authorised and supported the book. The lavishly illustrated story includes 80 significant artworks by Namurari, and for the first time, details from his oral history interviews recorded a decade before he passed away in 1998. This is the first comprehensive biography of a Pintabi person, and it reveals how he navigated working in an art centre environment over nearly three decades. So if everyone, please put your hands together to welcome Elizabeth Marks Nagamara and Alatoya Halloran to the stage. So Elizabeth Nagamara currently lives in Kinto. Um, but has been a resident of Haas Bluff, uh, Brownsboar, Papanya, uh, and Mount Liebig. Elizabeth has been an artist for Papanya Tula, artist for over 20 years, and has travelled all the way from Kintour to be here today. Uh, Alec O'Halloran is a long-time supporter of Papanya Tula artists and the Purple House. His interest in Aboriginal art led him to his research project and field trips out west to learn about Japuljari and visit country of, with his relatives, including Elizabeth. So I'll now, now hand it over to you two uh, to take the stage. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> uh, hi, everyone. My name's Alec O'Halloran. I'm here from Sydney. And with me is Elizabeth, as you've just heard, all the way from Kintour, 500 kilometres west, for those of you who haven't, are not familiar with the local geography. Uh, Elizabeth's uh, been a Papanya Tula artist for a long time. Yep. Um, and we're here today to, uh, to introduce this book, uh, which you can see on the screen. See the TV? It's behind. Um, Elizabeth, so when you started painting, what's, what's the story that you put in your paintings? Yeah, put in the lightning strike, yep. That's my father's countryside. Okay. Which place is that for the lightning strike? Kalipimpa. Kalipimpa. On your father's side. Okay. Um, so today we're just going to be sharing some, some stories and pictures together. As you've probably worked out in the first five seconds, this is a fairly informal arrangement we've got going here. Uh, hasn't been a whole lot of rehearsal. So... I've told Elizabeth I've got the notes and I know what's going on, so <laughs> hopefully it works out that way. She's very amenable. Um, so firstly, I just wanted to acknowledge the traditional owners of this area and also the Pinnaby mob out west and thank uh, Desart Naraluan for making this uh, opportunity available and also Papanya Tula artists who uh, Elizabeth has been a part of for a very long time and they've been supporting me. Um, and going back to the earlier talk this morning, I didn't know the Australia Council was presenting, but they are, and the Australia Council uh, subsidised part of the production of the book, so yay Australia Council. And also thanks to um, uh, the Dialysis Centre here in Alice Springs, the purple, commonly known as the Purple House, or you can call it the Western Desert Nanapa, Walcha, Pali and Jaku, Judaku Aboriginal Corporation, if you wish to, uh, you could just say Purple House. So they look after Elizabeth while she's in town. Uh, I'm also, with Elizabeth's help, I want to say this for everybody. You are Palya. Na Luini Alec in your Sydney Langaru. Na Lu Putu Kulani Literature Munu Pindabi Mungan Jaku. Na Lu Buknata Pala Nu Chupijara. Pala Rebona Ringu Manpila. And Manpinya Munu Nuna Nu Palampa Nura. Nakamara Lu Hopa Malani. Uh, Nanya, Palaru, Wakaringu, Naluwana, Rawalingu. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Um, so we're going to do a mix of things. I've got some slides coming up, so you've, you've not just got this one slide, but I wanted to read the introduction or the English part of the introduction that Elizabeth wrote for the book. Remember this one? Just English? Yep. Elizabeth says, Hello everyone. Yes, this story is from a long time ago about my husband when he was living and moving around every place to place. Oh dear. So we first met in um, 2007 <laughs> at Kintal. Can you remember when we first met with Daphne sitting at Panyatula? Do you remember any of that little story sitting down together? It was a long time ago. Mm, what were we talking about? Telling stories about my husband. Yeah, telling stories. Yeah. And you said, okay. <laughs> we didn't know it would take so long. Yeah. Um, so that's when we kind of started working together um, through... This is a bit silly. So we'll look at some pictures, all right? Can you see that one? So this, this is one of the pictures in the book. So you can see Elizabeth and me a couple of years ago in Alice Springs when I came up when I was doing uh, the kind of final approvals process for the book. And the picture at the top is the old Papania Tula uh, Gallery, which is in which was in Todd Street, uh, along from the current one. Uh, so that's where I first met people like Daphne Williams and Papania Tula staff and so on, and started doing regular trips up here from Sydney. And I was one of those people who hung around in the Papania Tula gallery, uh, either pestering people who walked in, innocent people off the street, um, or listening to conversations, or um, thinking how amazing it was to see all this art which I think is a common experience for lots of people. So uh, that's an early picture in the book. Oh, that's, see that one? <laughs> so that was one of my, that's, that's just to prove that I was in the back office of Papania Tula, which of course is, you know, restricted territory. Uh, so that's doing art research. So all of the artist records from their paintings are in that secret back room. And so I would go in and do, you know, preparatory art research, going through records and so on, to get a sense of uh, what this artist had done, when he was doing his paintings, what are the stories. Because the, if you're not familiar with art centres, they're recording the stories in the paintings and making certificates and so on. So when they go in, into the public, then there's information with them. So then, time to travel. So hire yourself a Toyota, head out west. Some of you know this one. So that's, uh, that's just near Haas Bluff after some rain. So stop and take a photo. And then get to Kintour. So now we're 500 k's west of here at Kintour, just before the WA border. And of course you have to line up to get your fuel when the petrol station is open. Or should we say diesel. And this is where Elizabeth is living. And I met lots of you know, her relatives out there and had discussions and so on. Um, and then we did some uh, little bush trips from uh, out of Kintour. And I'll show you a map in a minute. I kind of like maps. So if there's anyone out there who likes maps, it's in the book. Um, so this is, uh, this is near Manti, uh, which is this man's country. And it's Sandhill country, but it seems to me that um, there must have been a lot of rain or something because it was quite green looking. But as you can see, uh, it, it's kind of flat looking to the horizon, this part of the desert. And then this is at Nyunman. Um, so this is the outstation yeah, with, with the little house. Yeah. So this is uh, where Elizabeth was living uh, with her family 
in the beginning in the 1980s when the outstation movement was pushing out beyond Papunya. Um, do you remember living at the outstation? Can you tell us about what Jupi was doing? Might be hunting or painting or something while you're there with all the kids and family? Uh, when, when all the visitors come, we stay at home and... Uh, Just stayed at the house with yeah. all the visitors? When everybody's gone away, he's gone hunting. Okay, oh, he went hunting? Yeah. Okay, that's like the story with the dog this morning. <laughs> So when he goes hunting with these dogs, or just by himself? By himself. Yeah. With the rifle? Got his rifle? The crowbar. The crowbar, okay. Okay. <laughs> what's his, what's his favourite, what's the best food to come home when he's coming back from hunting to your house? Little kawana and kangaroo sometimes. Yep. And a printy. And printy. Yeah, like, the, like you saw in the film, some parenti and kangaroo. Uh, so did he like walking around and just going to places by himself? Yeah, because he knew this country very well. This is, this is where he walked as a child. So we'll keep going along. Oh, so picture of me learning where places are on the map. So here's the map. So... On your right is Alice Springs, where we're sitting now, and the other big dot is for Kintor, Wollongaroo, uh, just before the border with WA, so roughly 500 k's. So he walked a lot of this country. So which of the places that you lived? You lived beginning at Haas Bluff? Haas Bluff, Browns Bore. Mount Levick. Levick, yep. And back to Pupanya. Yep. From there, we have, have meeting to sort of uh, get rid of all the people. Oh, really? Going back to settle down country. Yeah, yeah. So the meetings were in Pupanya to think about West. Mm. Mm. So who made that decision to go back to country? Oh, the old Jilpies who passed away. The Jilpies. So, um, quite a few places I was lucky to go to on that map, which is good. So now we're in Kintor, and um, what does an art centre look like? Well, in the 1980s, 1990s, that was the famous Papunya Tula Art Centre. Uh, basically a shed with a little bit of accommodation on the side for the field workers as well. But this was typically called just the painting shed at, uh, at Kintor. And uh, Julby liked to paint in here rather than sitting outside, but people would, would paint and sit outside as well. Can you remember him painting here, Elizabeth? He was sitting down by himself, by himself. doing canvas. Mm. No children around. Okay. What happens if the children come? They make a mess. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they might be cheaper. Yeah. And and so if the children come, does he keep painting or stop painting? Stop painting. Stop and put it away. Okay. You find out more of these stories in the book, of course, folks. Um, so that's where he painted. I'm going to come back to that on another slide. Uh, so a little bit of history. So in 1984, um, Papanya Tula uh, organised the first big exhibition in Alice Springs, which was right here. See the sign? Araluan Art Centre. Um, Papania and beyond. And uh, Jupi had a major painting in here which, which went into a private collection and it's in the book. And then uh, this is a double page spread from the book. So on the left, <laughs> on your left, this is uh, the Red Ochre Award from 1994. So Elizabeth and Jupi went to Canberra to, to get that prize. Can you remember that trip, Elizabeth, to Canberra and Sydney? Yeah. What happened on that trip? We went there for him to collect a big check for $50,000. $50,000 was the prize. <laughs> yeah, so it's the biggest prize. And then you went to Sydney to see uh, Christopher's Gallery exhibition yeah. of Jupi, yeah. We got a, might have a picture of that later. And then you came home, what, what, was, what was the $50,000 for? It was 
Land Cruiser. Yeah, a new Land Cruiser. <laughs> it's the best thing to get in Central Australia. Did he enjoy that trip to Canberra? Yeah. Met the Prime Minister, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're jumping around, but in the preparation of the book, uh, I looked through lots and lots of uh, photographs of paintings and, and painting records and so on. So then the, the, the publication people helped by doing this massive uh, you know, printout of, of different pictures. So that's just one sheet of, of so many of the uh, artworks in the book. And I'll show you a couple of paintings. So this is from 1973. Uh, this story is about caves and people and uh, water and a corroboree story. But there's not much more detail with it, actually. But you can see his um, dotted patchwork for the ground and the flowing water and the caves. and It's a very striking picture. Uh, this one, Elizabeth, is the one that won the prize here in 1994. So this is the Alice Prize, annual prize here. This was actually a co-winner. And uh, Tali Juta. It's all uh, just sand hills, this one. Lots and lots of sand hills. And then another one in a similar style. Um, he was credited with moving away from a lot of the roundels and, and what was then called traditional tingeri style paintings of the 80s and doing a lot of purely stripe work. And so this is a, a mala dreaming, uh, also from Mampi. Mala's a little tiny little animal that feral cats managed to destroy. Um, you recognise this one? Just all the Junipa, little mouse story? Oh, it's green. Yeah. Did you watch him make these paintings? How does he do that? I think if you put brush in water mm -hmm. or on a paint, then you go to like it and start putting it. Okay. So what, what's this one? Getting, getting away all the paint. Getting rid of the extra paint. Yeah. And then dotting. So he's dotting like this every day, every day, every day. Yep. So this is a little mouse that hops around and eats, um, eats berries called uh, Kamparapa or Akajiri. And Elizabeth took me out one day when we were at Kintor with the family. Um, we went out and we did a little uh, bush tucker trip. Can you remember and you were showing me the bush? with the little Akajiri berries, we had some? Yeah. Yep. And your daughter and granddaughter? <laughs> Always family? <laughs> Coming together, aren't they? Yeah. Yep. Oh, so this is one of the things in the book is that you can see that painting we just talked about and there's Julpi finishing the painting in that shed. Remember the art shed at Papanya? So that's inside the shed. And it's winter because you can see the little heater at the side. And then there's some close-ups of the uh, painting because one of the things uh, that I looked at in terms of the art, because I'm not an art historian by trade, well, nor a biographer or any of those other related things, um, is that as Elizabeth was explaining, he's very careful with his dotting and he didn't even like to drop a drop. <laughs> so he was, he was very careful. And so down the bottom, you'll see there a couple of close-ups just, just to kind of show you his dot work. Um, people who are interested in studying uh, an artist's practice uh, will be looking closely at how they use their materials, how they use their brush, the degree of translucency in the paint, all those kind of things become uh, quite signatures for how the image actually produces its effect and why an artist who does a painting similar to that won't achieve the same effect because they're not using the same method down to the finest detail. So it's very interesting to learn and, and, the, and the picture of the hand close up is his hand. Uh, that's just the outline of the contents of the book, um, uh, which is his life story and his art career, his relationship with Papanya Tula. Uh, family stories from people like Elizabeth, grandsons and granddaughters, uh, kinship brothers. This was the photo I was talking about before. So this is the picture when you went to Canberra. Can you see that closely? So there's uh, you and Jupi and Faye Bell. She was the art centre manager. 
and Christopher Hodges because in Sydney he had an exhibition of his work. So they went there and then they went to the Australian Museum. You would just see down the bottom. And that painting that's in there is the one I showed earlier. That's in their collection. So they took uh, him in to have a look and to look at the other works in the collection. There's quite a substantial early Papunya collection. And the top right, you probably won't remember this one. <laughs> so in 1986, uh, a researcher came out from the Australian Museum to consult with, with, uh, with, with this artist and others, trying to identify some of the works just to make sure they had the right annotations and, and things like that. So there's a lot of that story. That's my time. Um, so that might... Oh, so that's... So anyway, this was me saying, you know, the job of the biographer is to look for the person in the distance, study, learn from people, and then get them up close. So that... Is that bell... That means we're finishing. That's okay. Can I just finish? I'm ready to finish. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you've got, if you've got any last words, if you've got a few minutes. Last word. Um, so there's two things. So I just wanted to say that um, uh, today, if you do want the book... So this is the public release of the book, the launch of the book. So one thing is Elizabeth's here, so she's going to do book signing. Uh, that'll be your last chance. And also today I'm going to give the... Mm. Just the royalties. <laughs> right. Yep. Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, just from today's book sales, so the royalties, which is, you know, no huge amount really. Um, we'll give to Elizabeth family because she's got kids and grandchildren who always like to see grandmother and see if she's got a little something for them. So we're going to do that today. And the first book today is for Elizabeth and your family from everybody here. This is for you. Thank you, folks. Hello. Thank you to Alec and Elizabeth as well. It's that kind of uh, generosity and commitment to sharing stories and helping each other to share them that keeps our industry so uh, vibrant and dynamic. So thank you both for, for coming on stage and, and sharing that with us. Salia. <laughs> Salia. <laughs> 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 